Okay, we're live from St. Mark's Place. I need to get my thoughts. The topic of tonight's conversation is uh, our worst qualities, our worst qualities as spoken by one, yeah, those other than ourselves. Oh, shit. So, on next. deck, we have Faye. Bryce, you got so many good qualities. What you got? Oh, I uh, Speak freely. It. Are you recording this too? No. Why don't you record this? Oh, we can have two copies. You can have a version. You can look at me, and I can look at you. Unless it fucks with your presentation. Unless it fucks with your delivery. It will. All right. I mean, I'll just leave it. I'll leave it like. I'll show my reaction. Sick. Because I hate hearing shit like this. But I'm willing to, and I trust you. So let's hear it. Like this has part to do with your dad, mm -hmm. um, but I I believe is your worst quality is you don't have like a father figure that you respect, um, like what they say and their ideas, and you, like it, like if you think Mark is, um. Like, it's, it's like, a, it's still a friend situation. New and, um, like, I see my brother have that problem because he didn't have a dad for a long time, so that's why I'm thinking, and I know your relationship is botched with your dad. Um, I, I firmly believe if you had, like, a good father figure, whether it was your real dad or not, it would help you out a lot because you know you're smart. And with that, you don't really need other people's opinions. But imagine having someone, like, you really respect their opinion um, and what they say you should do to have that. Absolutely. And, um, like, I see you and my real brother go, go through it, and I think, like, I'm just, like, imagining how great it would be if you had someone. And, like, I do think, like, stubbornness can be positive. Um sticking up for yourself um, but there comes a time when you need like a father and I don't think you had that and so you're been, you've been stuck like this and I don't think it's going to change but that's what I think is the worst you know it's so funny you say that because I thought about this same thing not six hours ago and you know I, I, I look back to a period in my life um, that same it was a the co cocaine period actually and the reason that I was able to break that cycle is because I moved from New York, well, I was living in Jersey, but New York metro area, I moved from there to the West Coast because uh, an older man told me, he was the chairman and CEO of a company that I was working for, he said, we are going to, it was really funny, I had to go in a room and pitch all these executives, CEO, chairman, executive, VP, national sales director, like sales desk manager, I did a whole conference room table on their, their company, to sell them their own company. And afterward, I thought I fucked it up because in my mind I was like, I don't know how they're reacting, but I was just doing my best. And it was, you just crushed it. You spoke a little too quickly, but we understood that you were a little nervous and we were really happy with it. So we're gonna groom you um, you know, to like, we're going to groom you now. And I thought about it and I said, you know, that's the only time that I ever worked at a place where that happened. Maybe like at Merrill Lynch, like a boss took a shine to me, but that didn't really help give me the resources that I needed to get ahead. Yeah. But in that particular environment with that nurturing, um, or with that nurture or whatever, I was able to excel tremendously. And I thought about that today. I was like, oh, I get it. So it was about having that one experience to see that the, 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 the quantum leap that I can make just by having that support of a father figure. Not that I looked at him as like a father figure, but in that sort of like nurturing role. It's funny because I just thought about that. Thanks for sharing that, Phil. Face steel, ladies and gentlemen.